Okie dokie. How you doing? Exciting day today. Laundry, garbage. Took about 30 pictures for a business for their website. Hooray! What an exciting day. I uh, I don't know why I pay <laughs> I don't know why I bought this lens. It's another E-Series Nikkor Pancake lens. See, 50mm 1.8. I saw it for $30 and I couldn't resist it. I've, I've got nine of these now. <laughs> I'll give it away in a photo contest, okay? Um, these lenses usually go for 90 now. ISO. For some reason, the discussion on ISO is unending. Um, it's partially due to new photographers or people that are still told that ISO is part of the exposure triangle, which of course it's not. ISO ASA is part of the exposure triangle when it actually came to halide crystals, silver halide crystals on uh, film for film photography, but ISO is not connected to exposure in digital photography. No way, no how. It's not my opinion. It's a fact. The reason why um, fast glasses, of course, and this is a, a recent debate I saw, fast glasses are far more important and high ISO is because ISO is in no way, shape, or form connected to more light. The main reason, obviously, for buying fast glass is uh, for depth of field control, obviously so. Uh, it seems a lot of people don't know that. So why would you want really fast glass? It's like, well, hello, it's for depth of field control. Um, the only thing that actually gives you more light, of course, is a, uh, a longer shutter speed and a wider aperture and uh, natively, which is not adjustable at all, larger eyeballs on your sensor. In the case of the Nikon D5, Nikon D4. By the way, the Nikon, I've got a pair of Nikon D4s, and uh, it's almost impossible, <laughs> not literally, but it's almost impossible to clip the highlights on that camera. It is the case nowadays due to SNR uh, uh, algorithms that are actually on the main board, inside of all modern cameras. See, noise actually has set frequencies that occur at, uh, at, uh, set, uh, at set frequencies, and uh, these can be identified and eliminated. The best noise reduction software, of course, is in your computer when you actually apply like denoise projects or Topaz plug-in for uh, denoising your images, but the straight out of camera high ISO uh, noise reduction is extremely good compared to just well, I mean, a couple of years ago, but especially against like an eight year old Nikon D3, for example. I mean, it's just radically better, but I mean, of course, you could apply a lot of noise reduction software to a Nikon D3 raw file. Um, ETTR, which is exposing to the right, which is the most important thing in photography that like nobody talks about. By the way, there's, as I've mentioned before, there's absolutely no downside, none whatsoever, to sensor saturation. You should always you know, maximize the amount of sensor saturation you have in camera and if you want to raise the shadows and say have only 10% of the shot uh, appear, you know, just where you're actually showing the highlights of your subject, for example, if that's what you want and you do not, you never do that in camera. When you actually, uh, this is a serious issue, it's not of mirrorless cameras, but how people use mirrorless cameras. In the days of film and DSLR, you had to know what the hell you were doing and interpret uh, the reflectance light meter, whether that be spot, matrix, or center weighted correctly in your DSLR and uh, film camera. With mirrorless, it's making people really, really lazy, kind of like computers are making people lazy these days, kind of like my fat butt's getting fat sitting behind the computer, right? Is that you have WYSIWYG. What you see is what you get. Well, that's wonderful. Well, I want most of the shot to be dark, so I'm going to dial it down and, of course, since all mirrorless cameras are feeding a TV screen, an electronic viewfinder, people will dial back the exposure, whichever means, whichever means they actually choose to do that, which is usually uh, aperture, shutter speed. And what they've done is they've actually choked intertonal detail and saturation to their highlights. When you choke the shot of light to make it come out straight out of camera the way you want, you've choked off everything. When you bring it down, it lowers everything. I mean, a retreating tide lowers all boats. As they say, an incoming tide raises all boats. The inverse is certainly also too. ETTR is incredibly important. Exposing to the right, you should always, you know, uh, finalize your shot in your computer with whatever raw processing software that you use or certainly prefer. Don't do that in your camera. This is a serious mistake all mirrorless uh, photographers do. 
This will use WYSIWYG and we'll dial it down. The camera will say, for example, you're in, in matrix metering, aperture priority, whatever, manual shutter priority. They'll actually dial it back and you know, they want, well, I want more shadows. I want it to look like this. The way you want it to look should be done here on the computer, not in the camera. Um, but ETTR can only be achieved with uh, your aperture and shutter speed, never with ISO. Um, should always shoot the lowest ISO uh, possible that you can get away with and shoot ETTR. There is absolutely no downside in any circumstance under any type of photography, sports action, wildlife, architecture, portraiture, anything where there's a downside to ETTR and lowest possible ISO. Let me repeat that since nobody's ever said that in any photography channel before. I think a mosquito bit me. Excuse me while I scratch myself. No one's ever said this before on any photography channel that I know of, nor in any photography book, is that there is never in any type of photography, landscape, portraiture, wildlife, sports, action, photojournalism, where there is a downside to uh, ETTR, number one, exposing to the right, and um, shooting the lowest possible ISO that you can get away with, so obviously you don't have camera shake. You know, obviously, whatever your your primary goal is via depth of field, I mean, you, you choose that. I mean, that's what the hell aperture priority is for. Um, well, I have this uh, fake fireplace going, going on over here. Someone might want to eliminate much of these bricks out, say, for example, and take a shot like this if this were a real fireplace. It's like, well, you know, I only really want to see the flames and some uh, intermediate mid-tones of the, uh, the wood and the flames, and they'll actually uh, drop the exposure down since... Uh, your camera set, you can, you can actually uh, undo that in your menu settings. Your WYSIWYG, especially important in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, uh, for manual exposure. Excuse me, I was thinking about 10 things at once. Of course, you can't do any WYSIWYG with any flash photography, with any mirrorless camera. Maybe that will actually happen sometime in the distant future, and that will make people, of course, more lazy. Someone will actually drop this shot down, say, for example, from what it is, like a stop and a half or two stops. When you, when you drop it, you actually desaturate everything, your highlights. This is really evident. You should actually go outside and take a shot um, with what your camera chooses. Uh, I say matrix metering. Um, bring it up to the maximum possible. Shoot ETTR all the way before you actually start clipping your highlights. And say you want the actual shot to come out where... Uh, um, much of the shadows are raised, in other words, an expansion of the shadows, so you'll drop the exposure by uh, increasing your shutter speed or stopping down your aperture. So you're actually uh, desaturating your sensor for the shot composition by, say, a stop and three quarters or two stops. Go and take those two shots and compare in Lightroom Comparator, and you'll actually notice that uh, the shot that was done with ETTR, number one, can be made to look however you want it to look, vis-a-vis -vis exposure, but number two, the actual saturation on the second shot. You can't actually make intertonal detail and saturate, of course you could drag your saturation sliders, but information that was never captured to begin with cannot be made to appear in Photoshop or Lightroom. Of course, you still have an ISO invariant camera, ISO invariant, uh, well, except for the case of Canon. I mean, Sony, Fujifilm, most Nikons, you have ISO invariants. But ISO is no way connected to exposure. When you raise your ISO, you're not giving more light to your shot or composition. That only occurs, and this all has to do with SNR, signal to noise ratio, that only occurs with aperture and shutter speed. So, last note again, since this bears repeating, since no one's ever said it before, there is absolutely zero downside to ETTR, and there is zero downside to the lowest possible ISO you can get away with to achieve the results that you want. No downside in any form of photography whatsoever. Why no one's ever mentioned that before, I have no idea. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Have a lovely day. I'm going to go process some images after I get done making two more videos. <laughs> Bye.